Welcome back to The Breakfast, a very interesting Tuesday morning we're having here. Uh, but we're moving on. Members of the Nigerian Bar Association joined judicial workers yesterday to protest against the non-implementation of financial autonomy for the judiciary. The judicial workers began an indefinite strike two weeks ago, but state governors had opposed the move for autonomy. But yesterday, the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, Kayo Defiami, said they have finally agreed to implement autonomy for state legislature and judiciary from May. Joining us this morning is the National Publicity Secretary of the Nigerian Bar Association, uh, Rapulu Nduka. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, Ms. Nduka. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, there's been a very, very interesting uh, two weeks. Uh, there's been conversations about who exactly is bearing the brunt of this strike. Uh, people who have court cases that are not able to, of course, uh, get that going. And, of course, uh, we announced uh, earlier today that the Nigerian Governors Forum has promised May to implement the autonomy that has been uh, sought here. So let's start with that. And do you trust that that will happen in, from the month of May? Do you believe in the Nigerian Governors Forum um, when they say that they will go ahead and implement it from the month of May? It's, um, <laughs> I must confess that um, it's really difficult to believe that um, the promises that they've made will be kept. Now, we must understand that this um, fight has been going on for some years now. There was a time that Jusong went to strike for uh, more than three months, for a very long period of time. And... Um, they, at some point, they gave the impression that um, some states have started complying with the financial autonomy for the judiciary. And so the strike was called up. And here we are again discussing the same thing several years after. Now, the truth of the matter is that um, anybody who knows the way uh, the typical Nigerian politician behave will, be, will find it very difficult to trust the governor's forum. And um, as, as, as far as you can see, the average Nigerian will see it as one of those gimmicks again to get them back to work and then renege on the promises that they've made. How many times can we actually hold our um, uh, political office holders accountable for what they tell us and what they say that they will do? So I believe that the average Nigerian would not trust the governor's forum until they see them start implementing those things. So if Jusson says they will not call out the strike until they see the implementation, I, 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 won't, I won't blame them because this is Nigeria and you don't trust our politicians. Okay, okay Mr. Onduka, um, Jusson began their strike uh, April 6th. Um, two weeks ago or so, and we saw the president of the NBA, Olumide Akwata, you know, appealing to, uh, you know, the workers to shelve the industrial action, saying it was ill-timed. We see now that the NBA is now, you know, rallying behind Jusun. So what makes the timing right? So why, why are they supporting the strike now? Uh, now, uh, the truth of the matter is that we, we had the opinion, or we have the opinion that because of um, this is just a few months after COVID lockdown, the NSAS protests and the, and the attendant lockdown, um, things have not really been normal in Nigeria. Um, a lot of things are suffering. The cases are suffering. Um, a lot of people are just picking up their the pieces of their lives. Um, a lot of lawyers who have um, litigation as their mainstay are, are not finding it funny. And so um, the, the NBA felt that um, the, the, the timing is not too right because of the, 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 the current um, economic situation that a lot of people have found themselves in. But then at some point, we also looked at it and we said, OK, uh, number one, Jusson has already started the, uh, the strike action. Um, there can really be no better time again for Jusson to press, um, they uh, keep on pressing their demands. So NBA, uh, we felt that it is better for us to align ourselves, mainly because we know that what Jusson is asking for or demanding for is the right thing. 
that is a constitutional provision. The courts have made its declaration over um, those um, sections of the constitution. And so uh, whether we do it right now or we defer it for um, the next two years, the truth of the matter is that, well, people would actually suffer. Cases would always suffer. Uh, but the bottom line is that I believe that if this is achieved, the, the, the level of um, uh, the speed and, the, and the, a lot of good things that will happen in the judiciary, uh, we can't imagine it for now. So I think that even though we say that the first time that it was ill time, well, we now are part of it. We are not saying it's wrong. But right now, we are now deep neck into it, and we are fighting alongside the Jusson okay. to make sure that the right thing is done. Okay, Ms. Anjika, two questions for you. What's the stance of the MBA regarding the Jusson's call for an independent uh, you know, judiciary, one? And secondly, the MBA went to you know, the National Assembly yesterday in Abuja to protest. Security officials locked them out, denied them entry you know, into the National Assembly complex. In Ondo State, in Delta, in Lagos, members of the MBA also attempted to protest. But, you know, the fact that they were shot out, how do you interpret this move from the lawmakers? And how do you, you know, foresee this, you know, going forward? Well, uh, I, I would say that it's, uh, it's quite unfortunate that um, there's, um, it happened. That um, lawyers who were not really protesting but came on a visit, that's what we call it. Because we weren't protesting, it was not violent, and we all came there to uh, press our demands, give them our statements, and say this is what we want. It, it's quite unfortunate that um, they were locked out in a number of places. Uh, it, it tells you also the mindset of the typical politician, the, the mindset of the people who lead us in Nigeria. And it's quite sad that uh, these things happen this way. But... Um, I believe that um, the, the bottom line is that MBA, I think that we may we envisage that such a thing may happen. And so that's why we say we're not backing down. We'll be doing this visit every single week until we get um, um, the governors doing the right thing. Okay, right. so we're not backing down. It's quite unfortunate this happened, but uh, we'll keep on pressing. And uh, we hope that um, our leaders understand what democracy is all about. It is about the people. It is about giving the people the, uh, uh, the right to speak and say their mind whenever uh, um, um, they, they, are, they are wrong. So, Mr. Uh, you're not describing just... it as a protest. You're saying it's a visit. So what, what really yes. is the stance of the MBA here? The, the stance of the MBA is simple. Um, we are pressing it on on the different uh, the government well, um, at the federal level at the state level those who can um, uh, um, speak to the governors to understand that the the, the judiciary should have its financial uh, autonomy because it is actually the major legal test to know whether the judiciary is quite independent they, they, there are three arms of government and unfortunately, I must say that in Nigeria, it seems as if the, um, the judiciary is um, uh, um, it's the, 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 the infant in this, in this arm of government, in these three arms of government. They are the ones that um, are, are not reckoned with it. And, and this is wrong, because if we have equal equality, that, that's actually what it means. If we right. are equals in the eyes of the law, Zanuka. then we should be given the right to be Jews to us. Zanuka, I, I want to know, um, do you think that over time there have been people um, in the judiciary that have been clogs in the wheel of this fight? They have basically sabotaged uh, this um, effort for, judicial, uh, for financial autonomy in the judiciary. Do you think that you know, people in the NBA and, of course, in the judicial sector have made it difficult for this to be achieved over time? Well, I, I don't really. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is that whenever it comes to um, the body of lawyers, lawyers are, are entitled to different opinions, OK? Most of the times, you see lawyers always argue on different sides, um, regardless of um, uh, even in court, for example, you always have a lawyer for the plaintiff and for the defendant. Okay, so most of the times we are, we can disagree on certain issues. Now, but the bottom line is that what is the majority saying? 
what is the association saying as a group? And that is what matters. Now, when you talk about the judiciary and if there are people sabotaging that, I can't really say uh, whether there are people within the judiciary sabotaging that because one of the major hallmarks of um, the judiciary, our judges and um, people who hold um, um, judicial offices, is that they don't really speak when it comes to um, uh, issues. Yeah. Um, they are but, but the reason, um, seen, sorry, to... sorry, Mr. Onuka, the reason I'm asking this is because over time we, we keep, you know, every now and then we see stories of uh, governors buying SUVs for judges, building, um, you know, court rooms in, uh, in their states. Um, you know, every, every other year we see things like this. Do you think that this has slowed down, you know, the conversation on, on financial autonomy? Well, um, I don't think so. The reason why I say that is this. Uh, at this stage, what we have on ground, they don't really have an option. Somebody's appointed a judge. Somebody's appointed... Now, now the judges are even better off. When you talk about, for example, in a lot of states, in Anambra State, for example, about 20-something magistrates were appointed about a year or two years ago. And they don't have vehicles. Now, it speaks volumes about, you know, what, what, what the ABA and Jusson is agitating for. Now, so what that simply means is that a, a magistrate, for example, who decides people's cases, criminal matters, will, after that decision, get into a public transport with the same people that he presides over their, their matters. It, it speaks volumes. It, it's, not, it's not right. Now, so the fact that... The, now, because we've accepted this state of affairs... That is why it is so. Now, definitely, that, that, that is why we are saying that the current state of affairs is wrong and should be changed. We are governed, where the judiciary has to go cap in hand begging the, the, the executive for what is due them. But when they have their own financial autonomy, this thing will be provided by the judiciary themselves and not the governors. Now, so I really disagree that um, it is a way of buying them over. It is what is due to them. The only truth yes. or the, the only, only sad aspect is that the governors now dispense these things at their own pleasure as if they are doing them a favor, but they're not. All right. Now, the good, the, the good thing is that, um, give or take, I, I can't say there are definitely corrupt judges, but most of our judges are, are, above, um, are, are above board. And so even if you give them the cast, I, I don't think it stops them from doing justice. All right. Well, you said most, uh, not all. But um, thank you very much, Rapolunduka, for joining us this morning. Thank you. And uh, we hope that we can have another conversation with this. And I hope that there's good news, actually, before the month of May um, with regards to the thank strike. You so much. Good morning to you. Thanks again. I hope so, too. All right. All right. That's so it here on The Breakfast. We just talked about, you know, the Jusun strike. Talking about independence of the judiciary, we had a Mr. Ishak Akintola from Murik, as well as a lawyer, you know, talking about the resignation or not, you know, that conversation regarding Isa Pantemi. Also spoke about the Supinig earlier on uh, uh, Plus Trending. And yes, that's what we'll call the wrap uh, today on The Breakfast. Do follow us on at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. That's a new channel. You need to check that for all exclusives are from Plus TV Africa. I am Anetta Felix. Thank Absolutely. you for being a part of our day today. And of course, uh, remember our social media handles. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And uh, there's a new YouTube page also that you should also subscribe to. Um, also at Plus TV Africa. And uh, join the family and be a part of um, you know, the conversation that we have here. It's goodbye for now and uh, see you tomorrow on yes. The Breakfast. Bye -bye.